drug slash money laundering, US, India, Ghana right FG, demand extradition of 11 Nigerians published July 5, 2023 countries, the United States of America, India, and Ghana, have written respectively to the federal government requesting the extradition of 11 Nigerians, a report has revealed. The cases for which the Nigerians are wanted in the foreign countries include money laundering, obtaining under false pretenses, fraud as well as drug-related offenses. The report, titled Ministerial Performance Report May 2019, May 2020 was prepared by the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, San, and presented to the Federal Executive Council. According to the report, the Ministry's Department of International Cooperation received eight extradition requests from U.S., three from Ghana and one from India between May 2019 and May 2020. The report said the department also received 62 requests for assistance in investigation under the mutual legal assistance Nigeria signed with the named countries. The ministry noted that it had sent letters to Interpol to locate the persons named in some of the extradition requests, adding, however, that it rejected the only extradition request from India which involved a case of alleged money laundering concerning four Indians. The request was denied by the HAGF, Honorable Attorney General of the Federation, because the offenses allegedly committed by the suspects appeared to be political in nature. Letter denying the request was sent to India, the report read. The report noted that 42 memoranda of understanding and agreements between Nigeria and other countries were vetted during the period, while the Ministry's Department of Public Prosecutions received 1,120 terrorism-related cases in one year. It noted further that 500 of the 1,120 cases had been filed at the Federal High Court while others have been recommended for deradicalization. The Ministry is projecting that by December, about 250 cases would have been concluded while all the cases would have been concluded by 2023. It added that over 3,392 general-slash-financial matters-related cases were received from the Nigeria Police for prosecution at the magistrate courts due to the enactment of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, 2015. It added, We are happy to report that over 1,000 of these cases have been completed in the magistrate courts, with the defendants sentenced to various years in the correctional services. While noting that more cases were being received daily, the ministry projected that about 2,500 cases would have been completed by December. The ministry added that it was currently prosecuting 1,359 cases of conspiracy-slash-armed robbery and 10 cases of securities and exchange commission-related offenses. On hostage-taking and kidnapping, the report indicated that the ministry had 10 cases in court while it was also handling 7 cases of pipeline vandalism and 10 cases of electricity equipment vandalism. The ministry said it had 25 pending cases before the Court of Appeal and 10 cases before the Supreme Court. The report warned the nation's anti-corruption agencies against what it called media trials. It said, the ministry has approvals in place for several of its programs, but such approvals need to be backed by prompt release of funds to enable proper execution. Note that ACAs, anti-corruption agencies, need to recognize that their prosecutorial mandates derive from the constitutional powers of the HAGF, hence the need for their compliance with requests that will facilitate the coordination mandate and the need for interagency cooperation to preserve the integrity of the prosecution processes. ACAs also need to desist from media trials especially where investigations have yet to reveal tangible evidence that will sustain charges when filed in court. How FBI agents uncovered hush puppy, Woodbury's N168BN frauds Meanwhile, details have emerged on how suspected cybercriminals, Ramona Bass, a.k.a. Hush Puppy, and Olilikan Ponnell, a.k.a. Woodbury or Mark Kane, perpetrated frauds amounting to over $435 million, N168BN. The details came to light in separate affidavits attested to by special agents with the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation, Andrew Innocenti, and Ali Sadiq. Both agents were employed by the FBI in 2015. The affidavit signed by Innocenti was attested to before Judge Rosella Oliver of the U.S. District Court, Central District of California on June 25 while Sadiq's affidavit was attested to before Judge Young Kim of the U.S. District Court. Northern District of Illinois Eastern Division also on June 25. In the affidavits, 
the FBI agents detailed how the suspected cyber criminals connived with others across the world, defrauding millions of people in business email compromise schemes, laundering the proceeds of their crimes and living an opulent lifestyle in Dubai, the United Arab Emirates. Hushpapai, Woodbury, and their accomplices were on June 10 arrested at their luxury Palazzo Versace apartment by officials of the Dubai Police and Interpol for a series of crimes such as money laundering, fraud, hacking of websites and accounts, impersonation, and banking fraud. The suspects reportedly scammed over 1.9 million persons in a fraudulent scheme worth $435 million, and 168BN. 13 luxury cars, estimated at N3.7 BN, 21 laptops, 47 smartphones, 15 storage devices and 5 hard disk containing data were recovered from the house where they were arrested. On Thursday, the Dubai police handed over Hush Papai and Woodbury to the FBI and the suspects were extradited to the U.S. He appeared in a U.S. court on Friday and faced criminal charges of conspiring to launder hundreds of millions of dollars from back frauds and other scams, including schemes targeting a U.S. law firm, a foreign bank, and an English Premier League soccer club. Meanwhile, in an affidavit, Innocenti, who is currently assigned to the high-tech organized crime squad, Los Angeles field office of the FBI, unfolded how the messages found on the iPhones of two Abbas co-conspirators showed that he was involved in multiple back frauds. The FBI agent's affidavit revealed that the Bureau worked with Apple, Google, Instagram, and Snap to track Abbas' financial transactions and locate his Dubai residence. He said, analysis of Abbas co-conspirator 1's iPhone and other online accounts showed that co-conspirator 1 operated and tasked money mule crews for a number of fraudulent schemes, including Beck schemes and cyber heists. The analysis also showed that co-conspirator 1 communicated with the UAE phone number plus 97154-377-7711, phone number 1, about multiple fraudulent schemes and money laundering. As described below, phone number 1 was one of the phone numbers Abbas used during 2019 and 2020. Based on my review, pursuant to federal search warrants obtained in this district, of data from co-conspirator 1's iPhone and from an online account connected to that phone, the online account, other law enforcement personnel's review of that digital data and from discussions with the United States Secret Service, USSS, and FBI personnel, I know the following, the U.S. Department of Justice on Friday said if convicted of conspiracy to engage in money laundering, Abbas faced a statutory maximum sentence of 20 years in federal prison.